in the past I published this shortwave radio and I will surely give the link on my YouTube channel. Uh, one of my followers has rebuilt it. Uh, um, we have communicated about it and he also got it working. So, my compliments at first because it's a very good thing and um, uh, I also uh, say made this in a very simple way. Say, uh, to enthusiasm uh, people for shortwave, for simple radio solutions, etc. etc. Uh, consists of an uh, uh, antenna coil here with the blue wiring, consists of an oscillator coil here with the orange wiring. Into the oscillator, we can move a ferrite rod that gives a very sharp tuning. So this is the uh, variable frequency oscillator, say the local oscillator. This is the antenna circuit and there is one 455 ceramic filter here. And it works quite good. Anyway, um, it was not, uh, not say the first idea of this video. The first idea was that in this radio circuit we had here between these two electrodes a um, coil, a choke coil. Because without that choke coil the amplification was so high and there was a lot of instability in the circuit and with that choke coil, as far as I can remember to the, yes, to the loudspeaker, more is in the schematic with the choke coil, uh, the whole circuit was stabilized properly. But I've used for that choke coil one of my measurement coils, this coil of 10 milli Henry, and I want to save it for the future for other experiments. So my idea was how can I uh, replace this uh, choke coil uh, or how can I mimic such a coil uh, making it uh, home made. And th this, that's what I've done here. There's a lot to tell about such a remake. Of course, the best thing is when you make that radio or find in whatever radio circuit a coil of a certain inductance and here it is 10 milli Henry, could also be 100 micro Henry, etc. etc. Uh, buy such a coil, that's my advice, but when you want to make coils for a certain frequency, perhaps this is interesting. I use my test oscillator. It's a strange contraption, by the way, but it works very good. Schematic is on YouTube. I will also give the link to that uh, schematic. Field effect on sister oscillator, and it can uh, say when you connect to the input of the test oscillator, whatever coil, it starts to oscillate and then you can read out the frequency. So you know the frequency uh, on which uh, this coil works. Um, I have to say there is a switch here, so you could can switch in a parallel capacitor here to get parallel resonance and there's of course now also parallel resonance, no problem with that. There is a natural capacitance here between the windings of the coil. Anyway, again not what I uh, want, wanted to focus on, but um, say at first how to reproduce such a coil. Good idea first is to connect that coil to the oscillator uh, and also the whole unit to the scope and the frequency counter and see what it all brings. So now the original coil of 10 milli Henry is connected to the test oscillator. We can see the frequency out and we can see the 
frequency that it generates. Here's a filter uh, for all frequencies below 50 kilohertz. Anyway, so it's say around 38 kilohertz. So uh, the advantage is to make a coil that also generates on that frequency 38 kilohertz and has the same quality factor. And quality means in this case that you have a higher say output volume, output level on the oscilloscope. So now I'm going to connect this coil. It's a replacement is what I've made. Let's see where it oscillates. It has 180 windings. Uh, my camera starts to flicker so I have to stop suddenly anyway. I hope I can finish this video. Uh, it oscillates on 6, 7 kilohertz, a lower output level. So that means that the quality factor of my homebrew coil um, does not match with the factory made coil of 10 millihenry. So I think it's now also 10 millihenry, but the quality factor is uh, smaller. I'm going to try it here in my uh, homebrew shortwave radio. Um, anyway, let's listen to that radio for a while. Well, There was a radio station when I started this video, uh, but this uh, shortwave radio has no uh, separate um, gain, automatic gain. So now it's gone due to fading or whatever. Anyway, you can hear that sharp sound, but when you uh, study the earlier video, that sharp sound is gone and the whole circuit is more stable. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Another thing that's perhaps interesting, uh, when you do these tests, set the whole uh, test oscillator to a certain position. Could mean, for instance, like I told, on this frequency, say around 70 kilohertz, it has a low quality factor, but when I go to another frequency here, the quality factor is very, very okay. So this coil works better on 137 kilohertz. Much better. And even perhaps on, no, not on a higher frequency. So these are say the frequencies where this coil, my homebrew coil has the best properties. Between say uh, 70 kilohertz and approximately 130 7 kilohertz. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, when well, you don't want all these problems, all these tinkering with coils, uh, you can of course buy a coil that you, the coil that you need for a specific application. That's say indicated in a certain electronic or radio schematic. But when you want to do experiments, always interesting.